Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about polar coordinates. So, so far everything that you have graphed before has been in rectangular, which you will also see as the Cartesian plane. Normally when we graph in the Cartesian plane, our point in the plane is labeled XY, where you went a number in the X direction and then some number in the Y direction. What we're going to start looking at is graphing in polar coordinates. In polar coordinates, rather than your point being in x, y, the point is going to be in the form of r theta, where r represents the radius and theta represents an angle. So the radius is going to go out by the circle. So this circle would be a radius of 1, a radius of 2, 3, 4, etc., all the way up. And then the angle measure is always going to be an angle whose initial side is on the positive x-axis, and then terminal side can be anywhere else. So this would be theta here, and then this could be the point r theta, again, where r is the number of circles you went out, and then theta is the angle measured from the positive x-axis. Let's plot a couple of points. So for the first one, point A, I have the point 130 degrees. So I'm going to go out to a radius of 1, and then somewhere on the circle with a radius of 1 is an angle of 30 degrees. That angle is right here. So I have 130, and I'm going to label that point A. For B, I have 3, 5 pi over 6. So again, the radius is 3, so I go out 1, 2, 3 circles. So I'm going to be somewhere on this circle. And then the angle is 5 pi over 6. So I'm actually going to quickly label these in radians as well, just so I have them, and then we can do a little bit of a review as well. So I know in the second quadrant, my numerators are minus 1 from the denominator. In the third quadrant, I'm plus 1. And in the fourth quadrant, I'm times 2 minus 1. For 30 degrees in radians, that's going to be pi over 6. I can see that these lines are going in 15 degree increments. So this is going to be the 45 degree mark, which is pi over 4 radians. And then 60 degrees is pi over 3 radians. So now if I go up with my reference angles on the left hand side in the second quadrant, I know that this angle, the 150, would be a pi over 6 reference angle, and it's minus 1 the numerator, so 5 pi over 6. This one's going to be pi over 4, and again minus 1, so 3 pi over 4. And then this one's going to be pi over 3, and since it's minus 1, that's a 2 pi over 3. I'm not going to go any further for now. So for point B, I'm looking for 3, 5 pi over 6. So on the 5 pi over 6 line, I'm going to go out 1, 2, 3, and there is my point B. For point C, I have 2, negative 120. So I go out 2. The negative on the angle tells me that rather than going counterclockwise, I have to go clockwise. So I know 0, 90, 180, so 120 should be in here. 120 is a reference angle of 60, so that's going to be this line here. And since it was 2, 1, 2, there is point C. For point D, I have 3, negative pi over 4. So again, I go out to a radius of 3. The negative angle tells me that I'm going in the clockwise direction. So negative pi over 4 would be negative 45 degrees. So I know these are going 15, 30, 45. And I need 3. So 1, 2, 3. There is point D. So for point E, I have negative 1, 120 degrees. So rather than the negative being with the angle, which tells me just which direction to go in, I have the negative with the radius. So first I'm just going to ignore the negative and I'm going to pretend to plot the point 1, 120. So 1, 120 would be here. Now the negative in the radius says to follow this line of 120 through the center here and then plot it on the other side. So here is the point negative 1, 120. For point F, I have the same idea. So I'm going to ignore the negative 3 for now and I'm going to plot the point 3, 4 pi over 3. So I know that 4 pi over 3 is plus 1, so I'm going to be in this quadrant. And then pi over 3 is a reference angle of 60, so 15, 30, 45, 60. So here is 4 pi over 3. So the point positive 3, 4 pi over 3, would be here. 
But since I want negative 3, 4 pi over 3, I follow this line through the center, and I end up out on the other side, 1, 2, 3, here. So that is my point F. Lastly, for point G, again, I'm going to ignore the 3, the negative in front of the 3, and just plot 3, negative 60 first. So 3, negative 60. Negative means I'm going this way. So thir uh, 15, 30, 45, 60. So here's 3, negative 60. The negative 3 tells me to follow this through the center so I'm out on the other side along this straight line. So point G should be right here. For the next part, I have write the coordinate in three other ways. So I'm going to sketch number one first, just so I have an idea of where it is. So for number one, I have the point 4, positive 60. So that means I have a radius of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, this is a rough sketch. 60 degrees is in the first quadrant, so this is the point 4, 60. I want to write that point in three other ways. If I went positive 60, that's the same thing as going negative 300. So that's an easy one. I can write 4, negative 300. Next, I can negate the radius. So what I want to do is say, okay, if I had positive 4 and an angle over here, and then I went straight through to make it a negative 4, that would then give me this point in the same exact spot. So I'm going to want a negative 4. I just need to figure out what this angle would be if I had traveled along a straight line through the center. So in order to do that, I know in the first quadrant that this was a reference angle of 60 degrees. So now I'm in the third quadrant also with a reference angle of 60 degrees. So that's going to give me 240. So this point over here is positive 4, 240. So if I follow that through and make it negative 4, 240, I'm then at the same spot as 460. The last way that I can write this set of coordinates is to, instead of doing a positive 240, I can figure out what this angle is in the negative direction. So 360 minus 240 gives me 120. So this is the same thing as 4, negative 120. So in order to get it up here with the 460, I have to negate that radius. So that's going to be negative 4, negative 120. Let's do another one of those. So I'm going to do the same thing with number two. I'm going to sketch this one out first. So I know that 3, 5 pi over 4 would be down here in quadrant 3. So negative 3, pi, 5 pi over 4 is going to be straight across in the first quadrant. So this is negative 3, 5 pi over 4. Since I'm in the first quadrant and this has a reference angle of pi over 4, the easy one to first rewrite this as is going to be positive 3 pi over 4 since I'm in the first quadrant. The negative angle to pi over 4, I would have to do 2 pi minus pi over 4, and that gives me 7 pi over 4. So 3 comma 7 pi over 4 is the second way that I can write the set of coordinates. And then I'm going to have to negate the radius one more time, so negative 3. And then I can subtract 2 pi minus 5 pi over 4. And that will give me 3 pi over 4. And that's going to be negative. So negative 3 pi over 4 as my last set of coordinates. Number 3. If I sketch this one out, I know that 3, 225 would be in the third quadrant. So negative 3, 225 is going to be in the first quadrant. And that's going to be with a reference angle of 45. So this is also the point 345 and the point that they gave me, negative 3, 225. So I can first write this as 345. If I find the negative angle to 45, I get negative 315. So that's 3, negative 315. And then if I negate the radius, I just have to find the negative angle to 225. So 360 minus 225 gives me 135, so that would be 3, negative 135. The next thing that we're going to look at is converting points from a rectangular coordinate to the polar form. So there are two formulas you need when you're doing this. The first one to find the r part of that coordinate, and that's going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. 
and then another formula to help you find theta, and that's going to be tan inverse of y over x. So for number one, in order to find r, I have to do the square root of x squared plus y squared. I know that rad 3 squared is 3, 5 squared is 25, 25 times 3 is 75, plus 25 is 100, and the square root of 100 is 10. So there's my r. And then theta is going to be equal to tan inverse of y over x. So that's 5 over negative 5 rad 3, which my 5s cancel. I end up with negative 1 over rad 3. And if I rationalize this, I get negative rad 3 over 3. So I'm really finding tan inverse of negative rad 3 over 3. Now, I know that when I do tan inverse of a negative number, I'm going to get two answers but I only want the answer that fits this point. This point is in quadrant two, which means tan inverse needs to be in quadrant two. The reference angle for rad three over three is pi over six. And since I'm in the second quadrant, that's minus one, so five pi over six, which means the point negative five rad three five in polar form is actually 10 comma five pi over six. Number two. I have r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. 3 squared is 9. 9 and 9 is 18. I'm going to leave that. I'm not even going to simplify. Theta is tan inverse of y over x. So that's tan inverse of positive 1. The reference angle for this is going to be pi over 4. I know that this angle is in the, so negative 3, negative 3 is in the third quadrant. So since I'm in the third quadrant, that's gonna be plus one the denominator, so five pi over four. So this point is rad 18 comma five pi over four. Number three, r is going to be the square root of negative five squared plus zero squared. That gives me five. Theta is tan inverse of zero over five and tan inverse of zero is pi. So this is the point five comma pi, which makes sense, right? I know that negative five zero would be right here on the x-axis if I were to graph it in the Cartesian plane. So then that's the angle pi. Number four, r is going to be the square root of zero squared plus three squared, which is three. Theta is tan inverse of y over x. So this is telling me where tan inverse is undefined. And again, if I look at this on the xy plane, so 0, 3 would be here, and that's the angle pi over 2. So this is the point 3 comma pi over 2. Number 5. I'm going to need a little bit more room here, so I'm going to do the r for number 5 up here. So I have the square root of x squared, so 3 rad 3 over 2 squared, plus rad 3 over 2 squared. I know that rad 3 squared is 3, 3 squared is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, and 2 squared is 4. Plus rad 3 squared is 3 over 2 squared is 4, and I'm still taking the square root. 27 so it looks like this should just be a three rather than a rad three. So let me fix that. And then three squared is nine. So we need to fix that as well. Much better. Okay. So 27 plus nine is 36. 36 divided by four is nine. And the square root of nine is three. So there's R. The next thing I need is theta. And I know that theta is tan inverse of Y, three over two, over X, three rad three over two. I'm going to rewrite that as 3 over 2 times 2 over 3 rad 3. My 3's cancel, the 2's cancel. I'm left with 1 over rad 3. And if I rationalize that, I have tan inverse of rad 3 over 3. The reference angle for that is pi over 6. This point was in the first quadrant, so my answer is pi over 6. So my final here is 3 comma pi over six. Number six, I'm also going to need a little bit more space for this one, so I'm going to do that over on the left. R is going to be the square root of negative rad two squared plus 
rad 2 squared, and that's going to give me 2. Theta is tan inverse of rad 2 over negative rad 2. So that's tan inverse of negative 1. My reference angle here is pi over 4. I know the point negative rad 2, positive rad 2 is in the second quadrant. So that should be minus 1 from the numerator, so 3 pi over 4. That means that my answer for number 6 is going to be 2 comma 3 pi over 4. So to find x, I have r cosine theta, so that's 4 cosine pi over 4. I know that cosine of pi over 4 is rad 2 over 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so I have 2 rad 2 for the x-coordinate. For y, I have 4 sine theta, so that's 4 times sine of pi over 4, which is 4 times rad 2 over 2. I get 2 rad 2 again. So this rectangular coordinate in polar form is 2 rad 2, comma 2 rad 2. Number 2. To find x, I have r, negative 3, cosine theta, cosine 5 pi over 3. So I'm going to have negative 3 times cosine of 5 pi over 3 is positive a half, so I get negative 3 halves. For the y-coordinate, I have negative 3 sine of 5 pi over 3, so that's going to be negative 3 times negative rad 3 over 2 which gives me positive 3 rad 3 over 2. So this point in polar form is negative 3 over 2, comma, positive 3 rad 3 over 2. For number 3, I notice right away that this is on an axis, right? 2, 3 pi over 2 is going to be here. So that's just going to be the point 0, something. I have to figure out what that y coordinate is. I know that y is r sine theta. I know that sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So this is the point 0, negative 2. For number 4, I know that x is r cosine theta. That's 1 times cosine of 5 pi over 6 is rad 3 over 2. So I end up with negative rad 3 over 2 here. For y, I have 1 times sine of 5 pi over 6, so that's going to be 1 times positive a half, which gives me positive a half. So my rectangular coordinate here is negative rad 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. That's it for converting points between rectangular and polar form. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.